might seem crazy what I'm about to say So sure she's here, you can take a break I'm a hot air balloon that could go to space With the air, like I don't care, baby, by the way
all group, but also the massive change it's had with the class across the board, uh, which has been a real surprise for us, but, but one that we're obviously pretty happy with. From there, I guess the, the key thing about having our, our group meet regularly was to talk about what was going on with Ginny's group, talk about what was going on in Ginny's class. As a result of that, the discussion around uh, with, our, with our inquiry team has been quite interesting. Uh, we've had teachers that have been really keen to try some stuff, some teachers that have really taken on board what's going on. Um, our DP who is just blown away by some of the results having, having taught those children before. Um, and another one of our junior teachers who's just seen some um, immediate change having tried some things that have been talked about which has also been really, really positive. Implications for us, this has caused a huge rethink into what we'll do going forward as a school. Uh, we're employing two new teachers in fixed team positions next year and so we've got to do a lot of thinking about what we want our classrooms to look like, what we want the practice in those classrooms to look like. Uh, you know, Ginny's been good at keeping our board informed along the way and they're really supportive in, in making sure that you know, we've got the resources we need to make this work going forward. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, as I said, totally blown away by some of the results. A lot of thinking to do, a lot of reflection that's been done, a lot of reflecting still to be done but also really positive about what impact this can have on not just those children we've had this year, but a lot of our children going forward. Katie Ree, Year 1 2 teacher at Summer Spring Green School. Um, after lots and lots of discussion and observations of Ginny's amazing successes in uh, the All Program, I've uh, done quite a bit of reflection on what my classroom will look like next year. Um, I have tried a few things out already, uh, looking more closely at sight words and the phonics program. Um, I've begun some reader's theatre work with the children as a rotation. Um, so next year uh, I think it's going to be a little bit more, or quite a lot more holistic. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the successes that Ginny's had in my classroom. Name is a letter writer. Of course you can. This is a very special letter. We've been talking about that it belongs to a group of letters this week, and in that group of letters, we've got A, E, I, O, and U. Put your hand up if you can remember what that group of letters is called. special about vowels? Why are they so important? Why are vowels so important? Isaac? Because they're an easy word. You are amazing. Good man. You know, every word has got a vowel in it. Who could think of a word that's got a vowel in it? And tell us the, the name. Jack, what can you think of? Umbrella. Umbrella. Let's have a look. It's a big word. Jack, could you see one of the vowels in that word? Good man, it's got an A in it. What else has it got, um, Flynn? E. Well done. Let's have a look. It's got an E as well, so it's got an A and an E. Emily, can you see another one? A. Uh, Good girl. What letter is that? U. U. So it's got a U as well. So this is this big word has got three vowels in it. Who could think of another word for us that we can check if it's got some vowels? Waimana. And. And. Waimana, could you have a good look and tell me which vowel is in the word and? Uh, a. Good boy, what letter? What's its name? A. A. So A is in the word and. Let's try another word. Can you think of another one, Isaac? It. It is acrobat. Acrobat. Let's try that one. Let me see, Sylvie, could you see a vowel in that word? Yeah. Which one? A. You can see A, good girl. There's two A's in that word, which is a bit clever, isn't it? Um, Ryan, can you see another vowel in that word? Um, o. Good man, good spotting. There's an O in that 
word. That's another one of our vowels. Can anyone think of a word that's got the letter I in it? Because that's the other vowel we haven't looked at. Can anyone think of a word? What was her story? Um, about going to her cousin's house for people's day. Okay, can you put her sentence into words? Can you remember her sentence so that you can say her exact sentence? Blaze again. Um, Starts with I. I went to go to play for a table day. Sounds good to me. Who thinks they can write? That sentence. Me. Oh, oh. Me and his wife. Oscar, have a go. Okay. Now, what do you have to do when you're writing a story? You have to think of the sentence first, don't you? So we know what the sentence is going to say. What's the first word you're going to write down? I. There you go. Okay, so how do we write I? What, how do we write the word I? That's good. I know what you, you're meaning, but we write I in a special way when it means me. How do we write that? You know how to write I. Can you write it? Fantastic. What's the next word? Great. Right, let's read this. I went. So you know how to write went. Good boy. Can we make that T nice and tall? Because it's a tall letter. Not bringing it down, bring it up. Because it's a tall letter. Good boy. Okay, how are we going to know what the next word is? I will we, read it. That's right, Milan. We've got to read it. Let's go. there and look at the underlined words here. We've got Michael saw the boy look over at the crowd. So if he looks over at the crowd, he saw the boy's fist swing and he felt the sick jolt as it hit his stomach. And there are three things in that sentence. Now that sentence is called a listing sentence. And we've had a wee bit of a look at that um, the other day with regards to rugby, where you have a number of things being described by the writer because it gives you a lot of pictures in your head straight away. The three pictures we've got here are the boy looking over his shoulder, his fist swinging, and the sick jolt is, you know, as he actually punches the boy. So there's three little pictures. So there's a look and a swing and a punch. Now we talked about this with rugby the other day. What are some of the things you could have in a listing sentence for rugby? Okay, what could we get, what could we do? We could say he this, he that, he the other thing. What do you think, Hunter? Well, he was running, he tackled, and he scored. Okay, so he ran, he tackled, he scored. Great, Rose. He, he kicked. So he kicked. Can you give me another couple of things to go with that so we can make a list? I converted. So he kicked, he converted. Could be, or maybe you have three things in that, perhaps. Maybe he aimed, he kicked, he converted. Great. He tackled other people and he grabbed the ball and shot the line. Yeah, we'd probably take the ands out of it. So. He, he tackled, he kicked, he shot to the line. That would be a great listening sentence. Jess? He tackled, he passed, and he scored. Yeah, so he tackled, he passed, he scored. It's almost too much to bear. I look over and see a pot filled with red, chunky, steaming sauce. Inside, I can see little brown lentils bobbing around like fingernails. My dad slops a spoonful on my plate next to the rice, and now the smell is overwhelming. I ram my nose into my sweatshirt and run from the table. There is no way I am going to eat that. I groan. Okay, so before we get into the vocab, talk to your buddy, and I want you to check from the other levels we're having a look at. What level do you think this is? Do you think it will be the level two or the level three? So have a look at your other examples. Talk to your buddy. 
I mean, are we going to do it like always? No, this is good, really good, Ben. It's probably a late three. Now, why do we think it is a late three, level three? Yes. Because it's, um, you said that it's two to three, and it's a bit, like it's got more, um, sort of, more better writing. Better writing. What, um, what are some of the things it has in here? It's got a few in this paragraph here. Um, that's a really, really good convention of writing. Can anyone spot it? It's describing something there and it's using one of um, the things that we've been talking about up on the wall. Talk to your buddy, see if you can spot it. When we were reading our story in the end, um, we were looking at figurative language and colloquial language. Who can remember what figurative language is? So, what's figurative language? It's like something that's like like a figure of speech kind of thing. So it's like not literally. That's right. So in our first part of our story, who can remember what the bullets were doing? What was the figurative speech that they used right at the very start? Yeah? Uh, flying past his face like does and things. That's right. So it doesn't suddenly mean that the bullets changed into bees. <laughs> it just tells you what it might have looked like. What about colloquial language, Sam? What was that like? What's colloquial language? Lots of it in our story because it's told by a person. Colloquial language, Kate. Slang. Yeah, it's slang. So there was lots of examples in our story of colloquial language. Right, today when we read. How to be aware of thinking while we read. So we've learnt lots and lots of other strategies, and we've talked about thinking while we're reading, but we haven't actually really had a discussion about how do we think while we read. Mm. Mm. So we're going to have a look at that today, and that will help us to select the strategies that we need to learn to help us fix any problems about what we're understanding about what we're reading. Okay, so that's what we're going to have a go at today. So I want you to have a look at the text I've just put in front of you called Snake and Lizard. So what I'm thinking in my head while I'm looking at that heading Snake and Lizard is I'm kind of visualising or thinking in my head about a long snake and a short lizard. And I kind of got that by looking at the picture. That gave me a clue. And by looking at the name Snake and Lizard. I wonder how the snake and the lizard will interact in this text. So how will the snake and lizard interact with each other? How will they get on? What do you think, Freya? I think that they might have an argument for which one will get the nice hot rock. Mm, could do. Seth? Uh, I think they'd have a fight who would get to go on top of the rock. Could do. What? I think they might have a fight who's the longest and who's the shortest. An interesting idea. I think the um, lizard and the snake will be ready. Be will be ready for have ready to have a fight. Or Interesting. Okay, Charlie. Yeah. I think they're gonna have a fight to get on top of the rock, or who's gonna be the boss. Okay, Jack Roy. What do you think? I think that they're gonna have a killing fight, mm. like, uh, like. Birds fight to get their mates. That sounds messy. And food. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. What I'd like you to do is, remember we learnt um, a little while ago, and we've been doing it in reading this week in class, how to skim and scan. So what I'd like yeah. you to do is skim with your eyes through, te- through the text and see what clues you can pick up about what might be going to happen in the story. So just skim with your eyes, Seth, and scan the text. By the way.